Boker Tov, today's daf Yomi is Ketan Daf Chav Kimmel, Ketan 23. We're going to start on the bottom of 22B, the last line. And Gemara had said that everybody is kosher to write a get, including a chere short of a katan. These are deaf, mute, and insane, and the minor. These are people who don't have agency. They're also kosher to write the get. So the Gemara asked the question, and we're going to take Rashi's approach or different approaches amongst the commentaries. We're going to take Rashi's approach to the Sugya. Rashi, the Gemara says, well, These people are not of sound mind. How can they write the get? And Rashi says, We're going, we're asking according to Rebbe Lazar, who says that you require, because it says the Kasav law that he has to write for her, means he has to write it for her with intent, with Lishma. And these minors don't know how to write a Lishma. So Amar Afuna, so the first answer is, Rav Huna says, that there's an adult standing next to the minor. And when the adult stands next to the minor, then he makes it as though the action of the minor, he helps the minor do it with Shema. So Amar Rav Nachman, Rav Nachman says, if that's the case, it's just an adult standing next to somebody if the adult has intent, that, that's as though like the transference of the intent, that's the case. Why do we stop at these three examples? Why not also an idolater? You can have an adult Jew standing next to the idolater. The idolater should be able to write to get. If we say, yeah, okay, the idolater is also kosher to write to get. But Tanya, Ove Kochavim, Paso. But we have a, a principle. And then idolater writes to get is disqualified. So the Brahisa tells us specifically that idolater can't write to get. Mar says, okay, there's a fundamental distinction between an idolater and having intent, which is not possible even with an adult standing next to him, and a minor and a cherish and a shota, because the idolater is an adult and he has his own intent, whereas the cherish the katan, they have no intent because they are minors, they don't have any agency. So therefore, the idolater is not going to be okay the adult standing next to him, but the minor will be okay. Then Rav Nachman says, this is actually not accurate. The Rav Nachman says, that which I said, an idolater and a Jew standing next to him is not able to write the get. Actually, I'm wrong, because it's certainly kosher. The idolater can write the get even if there is not a Jew standing next to him. And also, a cherishot of a katan is also okay without a Jew standing next to him. Because we're, we're he says, Rav Nachman says, we're going to reject that which Rav Huna said, because we're going to say, even if without a God of Gabba, it's kosher. And our Mishnah, says Rav Nachman, is not like Rav Huna, who paskins like Rebbe Lazar, but Rav, who says our Mishnah is like Rebbe Lazar, but our Mishnah is like Rebbe Meir, he says, we don't require Ksiv Lishma. And therefore, it's okay by both a Chera Shot of Katan and also an idolater. Because when it says, because of law in the Torah, that refers to the signatures of the witnesses. And that's what Rav Nachman says here. It says, Rav Nachman, Rav Mil, Sehidamri, that which I said, that idolater is also not kosher, that our mission is following Rav Lazar, that's wrong. And in fact, that the next mission tells us that an idolater is not capable of bringing is not capable of bringing a get. Mikal delineating siva. This this proves the inference is that with respect to writing a get, the idolater is kosher. Mar says about Tanya only chavim puzzle. But what about the brayz that we just cited, which says the idolater is disqualified? Mar says that he Rebbe Lazari. That brayz that goes according to Rebbe Lazar who requires siva lishma. Because since Rebbe Lazar says eighty misira karate, Rebbe Lazar says what's essential part of the get? The handing over the get. Those are what we require the witnesses. But says the cause of law, it's not referring to the witnesses signing, that's referring to the writing of the get, which require Lashma. But says Rav Nachman, certainly an idolater is doing it on his own. So therefore, therefore, Rabbi Lazar would for sure not allow an idolater because the idolater has his own intent and he can't write it for the purpose of this, of this get. So Amr Rav Nachman, Omer Haya Rabbi Meir, and then Rav Nachman says, I'll prove to you that Rameir doesn't require Lishma. First of all, because I feel Matzah Ba'ashba. Rameir would say, even if you found this get in the trash, and then you find it and you sign it and you give it to her, it'll be kosher. So, Rav Nachman. So, Rav says to Rav, 
So Rav is going to challenge Rav Nachman that he's basically challenging Rav Nachman's interpretation of Rabbi Meir that even if that you don't require lishma, that you don't require intent for the signing of the get. So he says because of wa lishma. So Rav challenges Rav Nachman. Doesn't it say that you shall write the get for her lishma? So it says specifically because of what doesn't lishma. That's what the Brisa says. My love ksiva So isn't this a question of Rabbi Meir because? And don't we see from here that you require the writing of the get? Lishma? The person, no, that price refers to the chasima seed and refers to the signing of the get. Another challenge sure, to have not one interpretation of Ramir. Eisfei Rafa, kol get, shenichtav shalol shem isha is possible. Any get that was written not for the purpose of this specific woman is disqualified. So we see from here that you require ksiv lishma. So Ramir would say, no, eima shenichtav shalol shem isha is No, let's read it as though it was not signed for this specific woman is disqualified. And then Mar says, Ace Kishu Kosvo, Kiu Kosvo Ishma. So we learn from here for the next price of that. The, the next question is it says when the husband writes to get, and, and the way we read it, which says Rashi Kishu Kosev Kitsaso, that this source implies when he writes a portion of the get, it's as though he wrote the entire get Ishma. So we see from here that you require Ishma. So that's what we read it. Kishu Kosvo, Kosvo, Kishu Kosvo. We learn in the Bryce, when he writes it, it's as though he wrote the entire get Lashma. We see from here you require Lashma. My law doesn't mean Kishu Kosvo a Torah for Shema, Kilo Kosvo a Tofes Lashma. Doesn't mean when you write the Torah for Shema, it's as though you wrote also the Tofes Lashma. And it's okay. These are the two different parts of the get. The Torah is the unique part of this specific woman, and the Tofes is the template. The person, no, it means Kishu Kosvo Lashma. Same answer when he signs Lashma, Kilo Kosvo Lashma. That's all Rabbi Mayer requires. If by the same alternative approach, the mayor is going to say, so we've seen two approaches. How So far, how could the get be written by a cherish to the katan? First approach is Rafuna, is God of Omeda Gaba, an adult standing next to him. Number two is that it goes according to her mayor, it says we only require the sign in Lashma. Third answer, if by the Ani Masnis and Mani Rebelazar, we'll go back to Sayyid Rebelazar, who says, Ede Messiri Karati. And he says, you don't require the Ksiv Lashma, you only require, you don't require the, the witness, witnesses to sign it because the essential aspect is the handing over of the document in front of witnesses, of the get in front of the witnesses. So you require Ksiv Lashma. But how is it okay? Rabbi Yudha Mashmuel says, we should share Makama Tarafis. The writing here was not, not, they didn't write the Torah, they only wrote the Tofes, they only wrote the template, they didn't write the essential part, this unique part. So therefore, only the Torah is required Lashma. It's the same answer. This is where Rebbe Lazar, it's Rebbe Lazar, but he left over the place of the Torah. Rebbe Zekar, Amar Rebbe Yochanan, Eino Torah. Rebbe Zerika said in the name of Rebbe Yochanan that this is not a Torah, it's not a teaching. What do you mean it's not a teaching? My ain't a Torah. So Amar Rebbe Abba, Kano Diachash, En Koach Hashma. Rebbe Meir, he did. Amar Eide Chasim Karsi. He says, no, I, I disagree with this approach of Rebbe Lazar. He says, now here he's teaching us that that in our mission is teaching us where they said that even a cherishot of cotton could do. It's telling us that there's that we don't require a shema, but rather we follow Rabbi Meir, who says that the only essential aspect is the signing of the get. Gemara says, Rabbi But don't we have a different source where where Rabbi Yochanan says that this Gemara that this mission is like Rabbi Lazar? Now like Rabbi Meir, he goes, Yeah. We have two Amorayim who argue what does Rabbi Yochanan say? Does he say it's like Rabbi Meir, or who says that you only require the sign in Lashma, or say it's like Rabbi Lazar, who, who says that it's either the Gadol Omen al Gabav or the place or they're signing only the, the writing only the toe face, but not the Torah. A kolk sharing I get. So now it says, look, the Mishnah. A kolk sharing I get. Everybody can, uh, everybody is kosher to bring a get. So this mission ends on two more categories. Everyone can bring the get except for the cherashot of the katan and also a blind man and an idolater. Kibel a katan vehigdio, let's say the minor got the get when he was a minor, but then he became an adult. Pakeach, the deaf mute, and then he became able to hear. Summa venistape venispateach, the blind man, and then he was able to see. Shote, the insane venistape. And then he was able to be of sound mind. The insane, he became sound mind. 
and then he converted, so all those cases, it's disqualified. Because when he got it, he wasn't of sound mind. But if he was of sound mind, he became deaf mute, and then he'd be returned to being able to hear again. Or he had sight, became blind, became sight again. He was insane, he became sane. He was sane, he became insane, then he became sane again. Kosher, all those cases would be kosher. Zeaklau is the principle. Kosher tchiwaso v'sofa badas. Any any uh, person who begins and ends with intent. Kosher tchiwaso v'sofa badas. Anybody anybody who begins and ends with the ability to have intent that they're kosher. They were they were kosher when they got it. Then they became unkosher. Then they became kosher again. It's kosher. That is going to be valid. That's valid to bring the get. That's what. Uh, Mishnah says, so Bishlama, Cheroshot of Akata, and I understand why they can't bring the get the deaf, mute, the minor, the insane, the love, and they dare because they're not of sound mind. Or the Kavim Nami, I understand why the idolater can't bring the get to Avara Terahu because he doesn't give the get, so he doesn't need a get, so therefore he can't bring the agent for the get, is how Rashi explains it. And with Suma, my well, why can't a blind person bring the get? So I'm remembering, Sheshes, blind person doesn't know who's taking from who he's giving it to, so he can't bring the get. So Maske for Rav Yosef. So Rav Yosef, who was blind, challenges this idea. Hey, but Rav Sheshis was also blind. But Rav Yosef was blind. Says, that, well, if that's the case, he says, how is any blind person going to be able to be with their wife? And how can any man be with their wives at night? They could recognize the voice. So too, here also, the blind person should have been able to recognize the voice. So why can't a blind person bring a get? So Elam Rav Yosef, so Rav Yosef limits the ruling. Rav Yosef says, no, we're talking about here is outside of the land of Israel. Because they need to say the get was written in front of me and signed in front of me. And he can't say that because he's blind. He can't say it was signed in front of me and written in front of me. He's not able to say that. So I'm going to buy it. So Abaye says, well, if that's the case, so but let's say he was blind and then he was he had sight and then he became blind. And then and uh, and uh, but so now he can say fun enough to fun enough. Would you say the kosher? Would you say it's kosher? But we say specifically that if he was uh he had sight, became blind, and then he became sight again, it's kosher. In only if he had returned his sight would he become kosher. But if he was sight and then blind, he wouldn't be kosher. But according to you, he could still say before he knelt him, says Abai to his Rebbe. Time of the Chazim and So the Gemara says that Rabbi Yosef responds, Who had the Alpha the Chazim and Stapeh? Rabbi Yosef comes with the Chiddush that the blind man, if he had sight and then became blind, even though he doesn't return his sight, he's still going to be kosher to bring the get. And the only reason why it uses this language is because it says by the insane, if he was sane and then he became insane and then he needs to become sane again. Time the and he needs to become sane again in order to bring it. So therefore, it uses the lang- that language. Well, but if he wouldn't become sane, he wouldn't be able to do it. So therefore, Tani Nami Patuch and therefore uses the same language by a blind person. He needs to have sight. And then, uh, then become blind and then have sight again. But really, it doesn't mean that. Really, it doesn't need the sight again in order to bring it. So Rav Yosef is telling us a tremendous chadish. It's not, I, I don't think it's a coincidence that Rav Yosef had this insight because Rav Yosef himself was blind. He talks about in the Gemara that elsewhere that he, that he, uh, he talks about his blindness openly. So, so we see from here, he had the chadish that a blind person, A, can bring the get if uh, under the circumstances where he had sight at the beginning, and so he could say, "Befunai nechta, befunai nechta." And then, even if he was born later on, as long as he had it at the beginning, Rav Yosef is mechadish on the Mishnah, and it's probably a chiddush is which is informed by his own blindness. On Rav Ashi, Dekan Nami, Rav Ashi says, "You know what? That's even the proper way to read the Mishnah because the Katani Zeraklal Kol Shul Tchiwaso Vesofa Badaz Kosher, because it says anyone who has knowledge at the beginning, at the end, is kosher." It doesn't say you need to be kosher at the beginning of the end, because the blind person, even though he is blind at the end, he's still kosher. So this is a, a tremendous proof. A proof for Rav Yosef's din. So the Gemara says, 
Mirabiami, Evan Mao Shiyasa Shlech Kabo get Isha Miyabala. So so Rabbiami says, can a slave become an agent? We the this case of the slave is absent from the case of this case of the slave is absent from the case of the mission. Mishnah talks about Ove Kochavim, it doesn't talk about a slave. So can a slave become an agent to receive a get uh, for from her from the woman's husband to bring it to to give it to the woman. So as soon as he gets to get, she's divorced. So from the fact that we say an idolater, and right, she says this question is both on halacha and halva, but that's where they ask the question in the base of Medrash. That's how Rashi understands the other commentaries. Challenges Rashi, but we're going with Rashi and the Daf Yomi. So bomb my name me Rabbi Ami. Can a slave become an agent on behalf of the woman to get the gift from her husband? So Rami responds, I mean the Kapasale from the fact that an idolater is disqualified. It says specifically idolater is disqualified, and Evan has more is it capable of doing more mitzvot? So therefore, we're going to say from here. That we call the Ebed Kosher, that a slave is kosher. Because if a slave was not kosher, they would have said it's the bigger Kodesh of the slave. So I'm Rabbi Asi, I'm Rabbi Yonasan, Eina Ebed Nasa Shech Kabul Get, Leisha Miyabala. But Rabbi Asi says in the name of Rabbi Yochanan that a slave cannot be a Shriach to receive the Get. Why not? Because a slave cannot betroth and divorce a woman. And so therefore, he doesn't have the laws of. Keaton applying to him, and something that doesn't apply to him, he can't become an agent for other people. So Rabbi says the slave cannot do it. So whereas Rabbi says the slave can do it. Maske for Rabbi Lazar, time of Milsa, the Lesa, of Milsa, the Isa Kasher. So Rabbi Lazar challenges Rabbi Am, Rabbi the Din that Rabbi Asi says the name of Rabbi Yochanan. He says, what's the reason it, that a slave can only be a, uh, a shliach and something that he's shayach to? And he's not shayach to uh, to give a get. So you mean to say in anything that he is shayach to, that he is connected to, he can, he can be the agent. But, but what about the following case? What about an idolater and a kuti? This principle that if it's milsa the isabi that they're under that law, they can be an agent is challenged. Because what about an idolater and a kuti, the istum betoras truma, that they are allowed, that they they that they are allowed to separate their own tithe. Because they're not shy, they're allowed to separate a tithe for themselves. Because we learned, idolater and a kuti that separated their own truma. It's a, it's a, it's a valid tithe. What is the consequences of that? Rashi says that a non coin can't eat it. And so, therefore. And, and, and so therefore, Utanan, and even though that's the case, we learned that if the idolater was appointed, if the idolater comes along and takes the tithe of the Jew, even if the Jew asks him to do it, it's not a valid separation. What my time or what's the reasoning? Because isn't this based upon the verse that says also you, that also your agents need to be Jewish, just like you just like you who do the tithe are Jewish, so to also your agents have to be Jewish. And so the verse is telling us specifically, this, uh, so, so this is coming to tell us that an idolater can't do it, but a slave who is a Ben Briz, excuse me, so the verse is saying that a non-Jew is not able to be the agent to separate the tithe, the tithe. And from this reasoning, we see that also a slave, even though he's included in the law of Truma, he's not able to take the tithe on behalf of the Jewish people because he's not called a Yisrael. And so therefore, we see from here that the reason why a slave is disqualified from Shlichus is because he's not under this, he's not in the category of Shlichus at all. Even by those categories, that he himself applies to, he can't be a shliach. And it's a question on Rabbi Yochanan who says, only by those things that the slave is not connected to, is he disqualified from being a shliach. So the more disputes this. So I'm ready to be Rabbi Yonah. Well, no, that's not what we're going to say. We say, ma tem b'nei bris, av shulchachem b'nei bris. You don't have to be Jewish, but you have to be under the bris, under the covenant. And the slave is under the covenant. The slave indeed does get the 
does get the covenant. So that comes to exclude an idolater, says Rashi, but a slave who is Ben Bris, he's he is going to be able to, to separate the tithe. So the Gemara says, Amr Khibar Abar Miyochanan, Eino Eben Nas at Shlich Hakabo. The Gemara brings uh, this teaching of Rabbi Yochanan in a different way. The Rabbiya says in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, Eino Eved Nas at Shliach. That a slave cannot bring the get because, for, because a slave for, cannot accept again on behalf of the woman because the slave is not under the category of getting and kedushin. And even though we have a different teaching which tells us that if a man says to his slave woman, uh, and you're going to remain a slave, but your offspring will be free. If she would be pregnant, Zachtalo, she is able to acquire the freedom on behalf of the of the fetus. Doesn't this mean my Mahaisa Ubra What does that my what does that mean? My Mahaisa Ubra What is it? What is why is it saying that? Look at Rashi. Mayan Yin Shikhor Aitso get Isha the Kamar Afa Pisha Shaninu. So what does that mean? The Afopisha Shaninu, it says in the Braisa, and even though we learned to Mesechas Tamura that if somebody says to his to his Shifa that if you are that if you're pregnant and he says that your offspring will go free, and if you're pregnant, she acquires it on behalf of, a, of her Uber to be free. And then the Gemara asks the question here, Mayim Haisu Ubra. And so the Rashi explains, what is this Shikra of a woman? What is this Shikra, the freeing of the slave, have to do with again Isha? So it must be. And Torah Shechor Isa, for sure, this uh, this Torah Shechor is applying to this woman. So why would we think that this that the slave isn't isn't applying? And so so what's the answer? So the Gemara says Ki Asher Hashem Bar Yehuda Rabbi Yochanan Tarti Amar. Now Rabbi Yochanan is saying two things. He's saying Nir and Varm Shal Evan Mekabel Kelach Averu. First of all, we're saying that the slave can accept a, a divorce on behalf of his friend Mi Araba Shal Averu. Avol Mi Araba Shal. We're saying that a slave can accept. A divorce, a, a emancipation document from his friend's master, not from his own master. And the reason why he can't become an agent for his own master is because, in order for it to be freed, from he, he needs to receive it from somebody else. And, and so, but if he's if he's getting from his own master, he's like the hand of his own master. And so, therefore, the the emancipation document has not left his master's own hand. And if you're going to say this is the written law that he can do it, that she can receive it from her own master, Emerlo say to him, that there's two ways to, to teach this matter. One is Rabbi Zera, Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Yitzchak, Chadam, or Hamani, Rabbi Hida. This teaching that says that that she can receive it on behalf of her slave. That follows the position of Rabbi. He says, I'm a shachar chatzi abdokana, that a person can acquire half of their body if they're freed as a slave. And so, therefore, even though she's not completely freed, she can be partially freed. Vechadam are my time of the Rabbi behind. Alternatively, what's the answer? Kosavar uber yerach. Emo. He says this fetus is like a uh, it was like a limb of the mother. Benasik commission hiknulo echamevira. It's as though he gave her one of her limbs, and therefore it's okay. So this other teaching of Rabbi Yochanan is is said in that context. So the Gemara says, so we say in the Mishnah, also those women who are not believed to say that her husband died, and we're going to see the five women who are not believed to testify because they think we were concerned that they're just trying to mess up their husbands. Then Manos Lavia Sagita, they are believed to bring the get and to bring the get and say that this that this other woman was divorced. Who are these five women who are believed to bring the get? They who are the five women uh, who are believed to bring the get? The Chamosa, the mother-in-law of Bas Chamosa, the daughter of the mother-in-law of Sarasa, the co-wife of Vimta. Her husband's brother's wife, Bas Bawa, the daughter of her husband, and in all these cases, we don't have to be concerned that they are, that these women are just trying to mess mess them up, even though there's some adversarial relationship. Ma ben get with me. So, what's the difference that we believe these women by get, but we don't believe them if they come to testify that the husband is dead? 
So the Gemara explains, Shaksav Mochiach, that there's writing by the get. And so since there's writing by the get, therefore, uh, th- that she's speaking the truth. Aisha Atzma may via Askita, a woman can bring her own get. She could bring her get as any agent as long as she says the funai nacht that was written and signed before me. But the Gemara says, but how could she bring the get? We had said in the Mishnah that these five women are believed, but we have a Bryce that says, just like they're not believed to say her husband is dead, they're also not believed to bring the get. So Amar Yosef, Yosef again says, Depends where it is, in Eretz Yisrael or in Chutz Laaretz. But Eretz, in Eretz Yisrael. In Eretz Yisrael, she doesn't have to say funny nachtam, funny nachtam. So we're not relying on her. And so therefore, we're going to believe her. Kasam chinan, mehemna. But outside of Israel, that the dibur didei kasam chinan. Outside of Israel, they're relying on her words. We're relying on our words, we're not going to rely upon it. So I'm going to buy it, but it's other, but just the opposite. The opposite is logical. Bar, it's in Eretz Yisrael, the Asi Bao, Ma'arer, that in Eretz Yisrael, if the husband will come and challenge the get, Mashkachinam Bey, we're going to pay attention to him and we're going to give credence to his complaints. So therefore, we could say, well, if she brings it, she doesn't have to say funny enough, funny enough them. So the husband can mess him up. So we could say she's bringing it to mess up the woman. So therefore, well, Mahamna, we're not going to believe her. But the Chutzlar, but outside of Israel, the Yasi Ba Ma'arar, that even if the husband comes and challenges it, we're not going to pay attention to them because we believe the funny enough them, funny enough them. So therefore, we're going to. Uh, Ma'am, that we're going to believe her because outside of Israel, the husband has lost the ability to mess up the get. Tanya Kavasi the Abayer of Shimon Elazar says, "Mishum Rabbi Akiva, Ishin Emenes Lavi Get Mikavachomer." A woman is believed to bring a get from Mikavachomer. Man, Hashem Shamu Chacham Ein Emanos Umar Meis Ba'o Ein Emanos Lavi Get. Just like those women who are not believed to say that their husband has died are believed to bring a get. Ishin Emenes Umar Meis Ba'o. A woman who herself is believed. To say her husband has died, for sure she's believed to bring a get. You know what? We're going to stop here. God willing, we'll pick this up at Davening in 10 minutes. For now, everybody should have an amazing day. Ayashikov to everybody.